God bless you, assistant, as always. Not only you, but your family as well. Because what is the matter of you are, we are blessed, but our family, they are far away from the presence of your God. The blessing we have received from God is the blessing that we want for them as well. All right. After this commercial, uh, I'm bringing to you three assistants. It's a very short experience that they had in the last meeting, the assistance meeting, and uh, they recorded and they sent to me. I'm sharing with you in this program. All right. I'll be back after that. There are times that God doesn't stop the strong winds, but holds your feet firmly to the rock. There are times He doesn't calm the storm, but climbs into your boat so that it doesn't sink. There are times He allows your burdens to grow heavier, but strengthens your arms. Further down the road, He will show you that what you went through today was necessary to make you stronger for the days ahead. There is no victory without a fight and no reward without effort. Later on, you will realize that God was caring for you every step of the way. And because of that, you have always overcome. God is the size of your faith. My name is Rachel Robinson. I am assistant of the Universal Church in St. Martin. I attend the assistant meeting today. It was very important. For me, it teach me two things. If I have grudges, I should take it out. Not to have grudges against anyone. Ask for forgiveness and move on. It teaches me to be humble, more humble within myself, to others, and to do the will of God, to save souls, and to do more in the will of God, and not about myself. It's about the will of God, my salvation. My heart should be pure and clean. It is informative for me, and I thank God for me to be here in this meeting this afternoon. My name is Steffi, and I am an assistant from St. Martin. What caught my attention in the meeting is if I want to glorify God, it's not only with the words, but how we act, how we behave in the work with the family and also in the church. My name is Monique, and I'm an assistant at St. Martin. And what caught my attention in the meeting today was when the bishop spoke about our behavior as an assistant, as a servant, the people are looking to you. They are looking at your behavior. And one bad behavior from you could be, you could be responsible for a soul going to hell. So this really caught my attention to evaluate myself, to think before I speak, to think before I act, and know that I am responsible for lives. And not just lives, I'm responsible for souls. So this for me stuck out very much. All right. Uh... Pay attention. I'm bringing to you, of course, we don't have enough time to, <laughs> to play here the whole meeting. The meeting we had uh, with, the, uh, with all of you assistants. But just a part of the, mes the message that we preached and also uh, the prayer, the seeking of the Holy Spirit. All right? And when we come back, I have something extremely important to share with you. As you know, we are uh, in the month of a, a clean heart. Clean heart. I spoke about it in the meeting. And, and this is something that we have to uh, not only to acknowledge uh, that we need to have a clean heart. But we have to work on it. We have, uh, indeed, we need to have a clean heart. <laughs> Otherwise, 
Everything we have is done up to this day is going to be as good as nothing. Pay attention to it. Uh, and then I'll come back. There is a word to share with you. So I'm sharing uh, with you part of the, the, the meeting we had Saturday with all of you. Every purpose we have uh, is for you. It's to help you. <clears throat> I'm sorry. The purpose we have is to help you to remain in the faith, which is not easy. To remain in the faith every day. We live by faith. If we lose our faith, if we lose our communion with God, our relationship with God, we lose, our, we lose everything. Understand? We lose everything. The blessings we, we receive, the blessings we conquer, they are very good, excellent. We need them. But they don't give us the strength we need to keep our communion with God. How many have conquered great things in, in, in the church in general? They, they, they testified, and through their testimonies, they strengthened, up, they strengthened many people in the church. They made people be excited. They encouraged people to do what they did for them to conquer the same victory. But where are they? Where are those who shared great testimonies? Why they left? They shouldn't. <laughs> if they, they are being blessed, they should, re they should stay. They should remain in the church. Uh, do you agree? Yeah. But why they left? <laughs> why so many of them leave after conquering great things in their lives. Because the blessings we receive, they give us conditions to enjoy a better type of life. It's promised here in the Bible. And, and we, uh, we help you. We, we teach, we pray, we, we make campaigns and purpose in different ways to give to you opportunities for you to overcome your problems, to change your life. And praise God, many of you have conquered great things in your life. Though it's not enough, we always work for you to conquer more or less. More. We, we do it. But we cannot lean on the blessings that we receive because they don't give the support we need to remain in the presence of God, in communion with God, like those 10 men with, uh, who were lepers. 10 of them, they conquered a miracle and nine of them disappeared. But to remain in the faith, it depends on how we are living our life before our Lord Jesus, before our God. And we had this month of, of uh, January. Uh, Hallowed be your name. You, you, you got it? We have this, this verses in Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. You see there? Huh? In this manner, therefore, pray. So our Lord Jesus, he teaches us, though most of the people, they don't follow his teachings. But he teaches, he teaches us how to pray. And many times we don't pay attention to it. He said, right in the beginning, our, our Father in heaven. So those who consider God as their Father, what is the most important thing he requires from us? What is the principal thing he requires from those who 
heavy him as their father. He said, oh, remove the, okay. Uh, our father in heaven, hallowed be in your name. How can we do it? How can we sanctify the name of our Lord Jesus? God is a spirit. We don't see a spirit. People know that we are serving God, don't they? Our family members, all of them, even those who are far away in other countries, they know that we are serving God. What do you think that they are doing uh, when they hear about our name? When they hear about us? Huh? What is the first thing that comes into their mind? Hello. <laughs> you are taking too long to answer. <laughs> huh? when, when they hear about our name, when our family members hear about our names, what is the first thing that comes into their mind? I can't wait for too long. Excuse me? Huh? The church. The first thing that the church. Oh, the, she's a servant of God. Huh? She's an assistant. Or oh, he's a pastor. <laughs> or oh, he's a bishop. Isn't it what comes into their mind? What do they expect from us? What do they expect from me? What do your family members expect from you, assistant? Hmm? What do they expect from us? What do they want to see in our life? Huh? See God? But how can they see God? God is a spirit. God is a spirit. How, how can they see God? What do, what do they want to see in our life? Huh? <laughs> Bishop, stop asking me questions. I'm not going to stop. I have to ask you a question. Huh? They want to see the way we conduct our life. The way we are living our life. The way we behave. Not only our family members, but our co-workers, they, they, they do the same thing. The unbelievers, they do the same thing. They are, they are, they are watching us in every single thing that we do, every word that we, we speak. And when we make a mistake, how do they react? How do they react? Ah, but you are, <laughs> huh? You said you serve God, or you go to church. <laughs> You say you go to church. Do they expect to see bad behaviors in our life? Huh? Why not? Because they know we are serving God. So, we are talking about us. We are talking about uh, family members. We are talking about co-workers who also make mistakes, if, if they don't expect to see us misbehaving, if they don't, they don't accept or they don't expect to see us doing what, we are, what is not convenient, for someone who is serving God, how about our Lord Jesus? What do you think he expects to see in each one of us? Huh? 
What do you think he expects to see in each one of us? I'm sa I said, each one of us. I'm, I'm, I'm together with you. I'm the same group. If our family members, our co-workers, who they have nothing to do with God, they don't expect to see us behaving in a wrong way. <laughs> How about our God? It's even, it's even worse than that. I need you, come sweet spirit, I pray, come in your strength and your power. My weakness. Come, Lord, as I strength to my weakness. Fill me with joy evermore. Fill me with joy evermore. Oh, my God, in the name of Jesus, we need your help, my Lord, more than ever. Because it seems as the days are passing by. Many, my Lord, are growing weaker in their faith, in their communion, in their relationship with you. Oh, Holy Spirit, my Lord, forgive us for the many times that you, you had a chance to sanctify your name, but we didn't. Instead of sanctifying your name, we put your name into shame. We profaned your name. And now we understand why, my Lord, there are so many people who refuse to come to you. They refuse. When they are invited, they refuse. They reject the invitation. It seems that you are evil. It seems that what you do is evil. But they, they behave like this. They react like this. Because of what they have seen in many who claim themselves Christians. God's servant. They don't sanctify your name. Though even people who ever been to church they say the prayer our father in heaven hallowed be your name but the way they conduct their lives your name cannot be sanctified be glorified be recognized as the name that is above all things have mercy on us my lord and we, we came before the altar because we want to fix this mistake. We want to correct it. We want to correct ourselves. We don't want to keep on making same mistakes. We don't want to keep on missing opportunities to sanctify your name. And we don't. 
when you give an opportunity to us to sanctify your name, it's because you want to be sanctified. And if we don't do it, how can you be pleased with us? Speak with God by yourself. It's important that you, you talk with God on your own. I don't know what, what is happening to you, what you did or you didn't do. I don't know. It's personal. It's individual. I give you a moment for you to do it now. Because our God, more than ever, if in the past he wanted to be glorified, sanctified by his people, imagine today. Today he wants much more, much more than ever. Oh, my Lord, my Savior, we need your help, your Holy Spirit. If you are his if you are speaking to us, it's because you want to use us. It's because you want to be glorified through us. Much more, my Lord, than the work we do. Much more than the flyer we give out to people outside. Much more than the meetings that we hold. Much more, my Father, than the offering we give. You want us to be a glory for your name wherever we go. You want us, my Lord, to be your light, to, to spread your peace, your glory among our family members, among our co-workers, my Father. Many of them are thirsting for a new life. Many of them would like to have a little bit of what you have given to us. And they are expecting us, my Lord, to bring light upon them. But if we don't sanctify your name, how can they see you in our life? It will never happen. So, Holy Spirit, help your servant. Help us, my Father. We don't want to put your name into shame, but we want to exalt your name. We want to sanctify your name. Ah, Holy Spirit, my Lord, after so many years in the wilderness, sacrificing, doing so many things, your servant Moses, he saw the promised land, but he was not able to enter into it because he didn't sanctify your name before the congregation. Ah, my Lord, we don't want to make the same mistake. We don't want to do it, my Father. And if we have done it, forgive us right now. Forgive us, Holy Spirit. And we, we are fixing ourselves. We are changing the way we conduct our life. We are changing, my Father, the way we behave before our family members, co-workers, before members of the church, before our friends. In the name of Jesus, my Lord. Raise up your hands to heaven and praise him. And give you thanks for him to hear your voice. For the certainty that you have. That he heard your voice. Go ahead and do it now. 
Aleluia, my Lord. Give thanks to Him now. This is a moment of meditation. Very good. The word of God uh, is clear. There is no, no, no shadow of doubt or confusion. Because the word of God is God himself. In the book of Job, I will display the Bible verse to make it easier for you to understand. In the book of Job, chapter 14, verse 4, he said, Who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Let me repeat. He said, Who can bring a, a clean thing out of an unclean? If I, if my heart is unclean, what is an unclean heart? A heart that keeps resentment, a heart that keeps hatred, anger, unhappiness, grudges. This is an unclean heart. How, how can we, how can we bring? How can we take something clean, pure, out of my heart if my heart is unclean? My heart is full of unforgiveness, full of hatred. I can't. Remember, believe in the mirror we spoke, saying that our heart is the fountain of life. If the fountain is dirty, if the, the fountain is unclean, everything that comes out of my heart, the life that comes out of my heart is unclean. This explains the reason uh, why there are so many people, so many servants. Though they are serving God, they are in the work of God, but there is no, no growth in their life. There is no improvement in, in, in all the areas of, of his life, of her life. Why not? Because the fountain of, of, of life, the fountain of life, which is the heart, is unclean. And as he's asking here, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? So if you, if you recognize that you, you've been carrying an unclean heart, if you recognize that there is something uh, contaminating your heart, making your heart un unclean, remove it, clean it out. Today, as soon as right now, as soon as right now, not tomorrow, because this can ruin your entire life. I mean, it's ruining your life. Because if you keep unclean things in your heart, it's destroying your life, and nobody needs to tell you that because you know. So take these days. Go to the person who, who has offended, 
who has hurt you, the person who, who did something that caused you pain, the person who commit injustice against you, perhaps that person lied to you or deceived you or molested or offended you when you were a kid, when you were young. Forgive that person. If, it is, if you can go to the person, go to that person. Do whatever. It's need, you need to do. But don't, don't, don't keep an unclean heart. Because this is the fountain of life. As, it, as the word of God says. And that's why we have to keep our heart. Because if we don't keep it clean, not keep our heart dirty, but keep our heart clean. If you do that, the fountain of your life will be clean. And every, all the areas of your life will grow. All right. When I come back, let's pray together. In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Please, close your eyes. It is now the moment of prayer. My God, in Jesus' name, I give you exaltation. I exalt you, Lord. I praise you and I thank you for bringing to us this direction, this revelation. I pray for this assistant, my Lord, who recognize that he or she needs to clean up his heart, to remove from his heart the uncleanness the grudges, the resentment, that, that hatred, that the heaviness that has been keeping inside of you for years and years, years and years. And though she had joined the work of God, is serving you, but she's been keeping an unclean heart. Oh, Holy Spirit. Strengthen your servant right now in such a way that she, right after we finish this prayer, she's going to call the one who hurt her, who hurt him, who caused the pains in their lives. Oh, Holy Spirit, stretch out your hands towards your servant right now and give her the wisdom, the direction, and the courage to forgive those she needs to forgive for the sake of her own salvation, for the sake of her eternal life. I bless you, assistant. Receive the strength and courage that you need to forgive those who hurt. And by doing this, the fountain of life you have inside of you will be cleansed. And all the areas of your life will float for the honor and glory of our Lord Jesus. I bless you and you who accept, you who receive this blessing, you say, they say Amen. this mountain can't be moved They say these chains will never break But they don't know we like we do There is power in your name We put that there is no way That tide will never change. They haven't seen 
what you can do. There is power in your name. So much power in your name. Move it, move on. Break it, break on. God, we God, we believe from it, from the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, God, we believe from it. All right, very soon we'll be back with more of our program assistant in focus, put it into practice. Go to the person who hurt you. Doesn't matter where this person is. Clean up your heart. Clean up your soul. Forgive for you to be forgiven as well. Goodbye. Move it, move on. Break it, break on. God, we believe. God, we We'll see a miracle. God, we believe. God, we believe from it. You are the way where there seems to be no way. We trust in. God will have the final say. You are the way where there seems to be no way. We trust in you. God will have the final say. Move it in, move above. Break it in, break above. God will. Stop.